Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this video we will discuss the buck boost converter. We have discussed in the previous examples concerning the buck and the boost converter uh, separately. Now we will combine both effects in this buck boost converter. And that will be in this case CCM mode, so that it's then continuous current mode operation. We will see how we can generate these plots in Simulink and also how we get to the values of this uh, parameter for the circuit, which is the buck boost converter. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and also verify this in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Now, this circuit is the simplified form of a buck boost converter where you have an ideal switch, your inductor, the diode, the capacitor, and also the resistor. And VS is our DC input voltage source, in this case, 98 volts. We have the switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. The due cycle here is 0.3, so 30%. And the inductor, the capacitor, and the resistor values are shown here. We like to calculate four parameters for our circuit here. The average output voltage, the average output current, the maximum and the minimum inductor current, and the output voltage ripple, delta VO. Okay, before we dive into the calculations, let's first look at the waveforms. The first one we will look at is the inductor voltage given here in red. Inductor voltage here is Vs when the switch is closed because this will be applied across the inductor completely from zero to dt. And from dt to the final part of the period t, the switch is closed, uh, opened. That means the diode will be then in forward bias mode because the current in the inductor will be then also in this fashion so from top to bottom and then the inductor voltage will be exact same as the load voltage or output voltage why this is negative will be explained shortly when we go to the analysis of volt second balance in the inductor this is the inductor current as we have seen before so the charging and discharging profile again and this is the diode current okay let's now look at the calculations step by step First, we check the conduction mode. We already said in the introduction that this will be a continuous current mode, but let's see if this is really the case and how we can check that. That can be done using this formula. So the minimum inductor value need is given by this formula. And when you substitute here the duty cycle, the resistor and the switching frequency as we have it here, that will give you 24.5 microhenny. So this is the minimum required inductor value for continuous current mode. If you go to below that, you will be in the discontinuous current mode. Now looking at our value of our inductor, it's a 350 microhenry, so way, way above the minimum required. So the inductor current is in this case continuous. Now using the volt second balance of the inductor, using this graph, we can set up an equation which relates the output voltage to the input voltage Vs. And that is done like so, that is the Vs times the seconds here so that's actually why it's called volt seconds so the volts vs times the dt and the next part is then the vo times the one minus d in the parentheses times dt so this is when the switch is opened and that will add up in average to zero when you divide out the period here t you get this expression in simplified form now work it out in the vo express and the other parameters you have this and you see here the minus sign that is exactly as we have discussed before negative output voltage from a positive input voltage now we calculate now the average output voltage using this formula we know the vs we also have the duty cycle that will give us minus 42 volts so this is indeed exactly as we have expected as a minus now the average output Current is using Ohm's law, so you get now VO over R, which is minus 42 over 10, so minus 4.2 amps. And the average diode current, you can see it also here in the graph, is equal to the minus of the output current. And that is then minus of this one, which is 4.2. You can also see that actually in the circuit, because this is the output voltage current, and this is the diode current. So there are actually in opposite direction, since the average capacitor current is zero so that means average diode current is the minus of the average output current okay the maximum and the minimum inductor currents the average inductor current can be calculated using this formula for this buck boost converter we have a duty cycle we have the input voltage and also the resistor so it will give you exactly six amps the peak peak inductor current 
is calculated using this formula, using again the duty cycle, the input voltage, now the inductor value and the switching frequency will give you 0 0.84 amps. Now using these two values, we can calculate the maximum inductor current like so, which is then the average plus the half of the peak peak current, which will give you 6.42 amps. And the minimum in a similar fashion, you use here a minus sign that will give you 5.58 amps. And this is indeed larger than zero, so it's again a proof that this is a continuous current mode operation. Now, the output ripple, so for the output voltage, is given by this formula. So you see again the duty cycle, the R and the capacitor C, and the switching frequency. This is the ratio of the ripple voltage, peak peak ripple voltage, over the volt output voltage itself. Again, using values here, you get now 0.003, and that means actually the following. The output voltage ripple, peak peak, is 0.3% of the output voltage itself, so, or 126 millivolts, so 0.3% of the 42 volts. The maximum allowed equivalent series resistor, which is an important parameter which of the capacitor, because for the selection of your capacitor, you, need to, you really need to know that. Now that is given by this formula in approximate form, so that is the e ESR, so the for RC, so the small letter RC, which is then the equivalent serial resistor, times the change in the capacitor current. But change in the capacitor current is also the maximum inductor current. In this case, we can calculate that using the what we have calculated here, peak peak output voltage, and also here the inductor current maximum. You get now 19.6 milliohms. That is the maximum allowed. ESR for the capacitor. Now let's now go to the simulation results. First the circuit, these are the values we have calculated in summary. This is the circuit, you see here also the scope here, we will see also these waveforms step by step in the coming slides. Okay, let's now go for the steady state values for the output voltage now to current first. What you see here is the yellow one which is our output current, load current or output current and also the light blue one which is our load voltage or output voltage. This will give you minus 4.208 amps, the other one will give you minus 42.08 amps. So you see they are all very close to what we have calculated here. So this is nice. The next one is about the peak peak inductor current, about this waveform and given here in red. Again the values for the labels 1 and 2 are shown here. And if I make it now in a larger view, you see here values. And the peak peak value here will be then 0 0.84 amps approximately. Which is a little bit smaller, but this, what we had calculated was 0 0.84 exactly. So this is also checked. The next one is about the peak peak inductor voltage. Peak peak inductor voltage is given here in green. Label 1 and label 2 also shown here. But let's first calculate again what it was. Because we have seen in the volt second balance from this graph also. That the VL max was BVS, which is 98 volts, and VL minimum was VO, which is then minus 42 volts. Now let's see if that is really correct in the table here, and also given here in a larger view, you see here 97.99 volts close to 98, and the other one is minus 42.06 volt, also very close to what we have here. So this is also checked. This next one is the load voltage. You see that here in light blue the values for the each label one and label two are shown here the maximum is minus 41.98 volts and the minimum is minus 42.10 volts and the peak peak here is given as you can also see that here 0 0.1187 milli, uh, 87 volts so that means 118 millivolts but if you go a little bit closer and look at the statistic here of the signal, you see here 128 millivolts. This is also very close to what we have calculated here, which is 126 millivolts. So that is also checked. The next one is the peak peak load current, which is this yellow one. Again, the values for each label are shown here in the table. The maximum and the minimum are shown here, and there is also a peak peak value of 11.87 milliamps or approximately 12 milliamps here. Okay. The final one is our peak peak capacitor current that's shown here in the pink one or dark pink color here. You see here two labels. One of those is the minimum here all the way here and the other one is the maximum. And the values are shown here in a table. 
And if I show that in the larger view here, you see here 4.231 amps for the maximum and the minimum is minus 2.185 amps. And the max peak peak value here is 6.415 amps. And the interesting thing is we said before that the peak peak capacitor current must be or should be the maximum inductor current, which is also the case because the maximum inductor current was 6.42 and this is very close to 6.42. So this is also checked. All right, this was our example considering the buck boost converter in the continuous current mode. We have calculated the necessary values here and also verified this in MATLAB simulating simulations. See you next time in another video.